Hello, this is Joe McGee. Welcome to our podcast. Make sure that you subscribe and please share the podcast with your friends. That is the number one way you can help us reach people with God's love and healing. We love you guys. Hope you enjoy the podcast. Hey, everybody. It's Joe McGee. We're going through the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. We're in the book of Leviticus, one of the most detailed books in the Bible about all the sins and all the results of all those sins and why you shouldn't do them and what it would cost you if you do if you do them, it's like, woo. And so I joke with people all the time. I said, everybody needs to read Leviticus one time. You just go through it. I mean, word by word, read the whole book. Now you have to do it in the daytime. Don't do it when you're sleepy. Don't do it late at night. Best time to do it early in the morning. Get your 30 minute Bible reading time and go through Leviticus because it's God's heart. It's what God thought, it's what he wanted. So he had some things in mind. So we're going to read out of Leviticus 16 and 17 today about the holiest day of the year. The great day of atonement observed each year was Israel's most significant act of worship. On that, the nation gathered together, expectedly as the high priest entered the most holy place with the blood of atonement to cover the sins of the nation for another year, because the blood was a central ingredient in Israel's uh, national and personal forgiveness. And it's all tied to blood. Well, it takes blood. What's going to take in the Holy of Holies? Blood. Uh, what do you need to cover your sin? Blood. It's all blood because life's in blood. Life and death's in the blood. It's in the blood. And so God prohibited its use uh, for any purpose except for sacrifice to him. The blood represented life that brings atonement. Whoa, so good. So I, I've got these questions. Have you ever had to live with a grieving uncertainty, a recurring illness, an overdue bill, the threat of legal action, the emotions of facing situations like these? They're intensely painful. I've been through that before. I remember one time uh got behind on my taxes. I'm trying to catch up. I'm talking to the tax people. Hey, guys, I don't know what I did wrong, but. Evidently, I read that wrong. I didn't pay everything I needed to pay, and I owe some money. Uh, how can I pay it back? And I remember one time when I was a, a tax situation, because I, I always pay my taxes. Well, I, I had made some mistakes on the numbers, and I got behind. Well, they sent me this bill, like, whoa, well, I, I don't have a check to write that. Well, I called and said, hey, I messed up. I did it wrong. I read the numbers wrong, and I owe this much money. Can you work with me? Well, they're regular humans at the tax office. Whether you think that or not, they're regular people like you and they wash dishes and they got laundry to do and they got kids to raise. Most of them are normal people and not 99% of the time you're going to get a good person. And so I said, Hey, what can we work out? Well, what can you do? Well, I can do this much every month. He said, well, let's just do that. And if you can pay more, pay more, but if you can't, we'll make this work. And they were so friendly and they were so helpful and I got caught up and I paid it off. And I realized, oh, man, I'll, but all those thoughts were, man, they're going to hunt me down. They're looking for me. They're going to just wait and see if I mess up. No, they're not. They're regular people. And so most times the devil gets us afraid of something that's not even there. It's not real. It doesn't exist. And so one thing you go through Leviticus, God's showing, look, I got reached for all this, but the whole thing is still sin. You know, if you learn how to repent, you'll be fine. <laughs> because there are no perfect people. They don't exist. The Old Testament times and emotions that charged the air on the Day of Atonement, just as intense, as the high priest costly entered the most holy place to make atonement for the sins of the nation, one question was uppermost in everybody's mind. Was God going to pass over our sins for another year? Will God look over our sins? for? The, he's going to take the blood in to the Holy of Holies, Ark of the Covenant, sprinkle the blood, is it going to cover us? Well, if the priest came back out and he lived through that, yes, we are covered for another year. We're good for another year. Uh, the, we're, we're forgiven for another year. God's mercy is good for another year. And it, it's almost God was just like walking them, like a teaching a child to walk step by step, line by line. And so it's really good. See, you know, Jesus, he bought that for us in the, in the blood of Jesus. Now, the word atone, the word appease, the word pacify come from the same Hebrew root meaning to cover. What? I'm going to cover your sin. 
What? I'm going to cover your sin. What are you going to do? Well, I'm going to atone for it. I'm going to appease it. I'm going to pass by. What does that mean? I got you covered. Be like you go bowling to the throne of grace. Now, I've taught this so many times. When I taught intercessor prayer, I said, you can run bowling to the throne of grace, get mercy up in time of need. Now, when I go to my father, I have an accuser. He's the devil. He's the accuser of the brethren. He's accusing me of things I've done, things I've thought. He's trying to make me feel guilty, make me feel bad. But I can run bold to the throne of grace because I have an attorney in heaven. Jesus is my attorney. He's my lawyer. He represents me. He, he's my lawyer. So I come to the throne of God and say, well, have you done this? Yes. And so my attorney says, yes, but it's been paid for. Did, it, did, did, did Joe do that? Yes, but it's been paid for. Did Joe do that? Did he say that? Yes, but it's been paid for. The blood of Jesus cleanses me from all unrighteousness. If you ever get a, a revelation that you'll run, we'll have to chase you down. It is incredible because there's no more guilt. There's, there's no more feeling bad. What is it? Did you mess up? Yes. I'm still human. I messed up, but I can run boldly to the throne of grace to get mercy and help in time of need. So when I go to my father, when I'm praying about anything, I still have this mental image. Father, you know what's going on. You know what I've done. You know what the, you know what they did to me. You know what they're trying to do. I come boldly to get some mercy and some grace. Well, he promised me if I asked for mercy, he'd give it every time. But when I'm talking to my father, next to my father is my oldest brother, Jesus. He's my lawyer. My lawyer is in heaven next to his father. And when I'm talking to my father, my Lord said, yes, Lord, uh, my, my blood's covered him. My blood's sanctified him. My blood's protected him. My blood's forgiven him. It's the blood of Jesus. that's still on the mercy seat of heaven. It's not dried up. You go to heaven, there's a mercy. Jesus' blood, which he took when he left his mother, when he came out of the grave. Don't touch me. I've not yet been to my father, your father, my God, and your God. I've got to take my blood to the mercy seat. Why? Because every time God looks at me, he looks at that, sees it. No, he's covered by my son's blood. He's covered by my son's blood. He's covered by my son's blood. He's covered. By, I'm covered. Does that mean you sin all you want? No, but it means I'm covered when I do sin. I, I'm covered. And it's like, it is such a revelation. It's just amazing. So uh, Noah's committed to make a boat from a wood and seal it with tar inside and out. Just the tar covered the boat or protect the boat's pastures. So the shed blood of the sacrifice stood between sinful humanity and a holy God whose law had been violated. So he tried it. Well, everything's a top. What's the art? What's the top protection? Well, God, sin's brought judgment on the world. Everything's going to, everybody's going to drown. It's like, so you build an art. What is it? Well, we got you covered. Hell's everywhere. Everybody's drowning, but you, you're covered. Well, something like that is the type of the blood. What do you got? I'm covered by the blood of Jesus. When God looks at me, he looks at his son's blood in heaven. When I go to heaven, when I'm praying, well, it's a little prayer or a serious prayer or something. Slide every day. I pray every day. When I get up every morning, I'm, I'm thinking this is the day the Lord has made. I'm going to rejoice and be glad in it. And so every day I'm very thankful. I'm going to heaven, going to the throne. I realize that I can go there because next to him is my elder brother, Jesus, saying, yeah, my blood covers him, son. My blood covers him, father. He's covered. He's covered. I have an advocate with the father. Now, it gets in a lot of King James words, advocate, attorney, lawyer. Uh, you say, well, you know, if you're going to, if you ever been to court, you're a lawyer, you want to get a good one. You don't want a second rate lawyer. You want the best you can get. When we have the best lawyer in the universe, Jesus, his blood's laying there on that sacrifice. Like, my blood paid for that. Father, my blood paid for that. Father, my blood paid for what Joe did right there. I'm covered by the blood of Jesus. Again, that doesn't mean I just keep on sinning. It's just like, but I'm covered. I can run boldly to get mercy and help because the Bible says the righteous fall seven times a day, but they get back up. You know, the disciples came to Jesus one time and they said, well, how many times are we supposed to forgive somebody? Like seven times a day? Never exaggerated. Are we supposed to forgive like seven times a day? And Jesus said, no, no, well, I think so. That's just crazy to forgive somebody seven times a day. No, 70 times seven. And then what? 
Yeah, 70 times, 490 times a day. You need to forgive your brother 490 times a day. Forgive, 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 forgive. Because that's what God's doing for us. Because the blood of Jesus, we can run boldly to the throne of grace to get mercy we don't deserve and grace in time of need. God said, my grace is sufficient for you. Whatever, I, my grace will cover you. You got it made. Nothing's ever come up on us, God said. Nothing's ever come up on us. He's not already made a way out. Whatever you're going through today, whatever you're, whatever you're sitting there, whatever you're going through, God has already made a way out of it. There's already an answer. We're going to do We've got to find out what it is. So that's why you pray, Father, I want to thank you. And so that's why I'm real big on the enter his gates with thanksgiving, enter his courts with praise. When you come before God, you come before him with thanksgiving. You don't come up, well, God, something bad's happened again. You know, you're going to God, Father, I want to thank you that you're good and you're merciful and you're kind and you're gracious. I want to thank you for the shed blood of Jesus, for the infilling of the Holy Spirit. I want to thank you for the body of Christ. I want to thank you for my pastor, my local church. I want to thank you for the friends you put in my life. You start thanking God, and he starts showing up. God inhabits praise. God goes where he gets thanked. God doesn't go where he gets cussed and cursed and blasphemed. God goes where he gets thanked. So people are like, I just don't feel God. Well, you've not thanked him lately, evidently. You need to start thanking God. Well, thank you for what? Well, just thank him in advance for what he's going to do. Well, I thank you. You're going to work all things out to my good. I thank you. You're going to surround me with divine favor. People are going to like me not even know why. I thank you, Father. You're going to order my steps, direct my path. I don't know how I'm going to get out of this, but you do, and you've already made a way out. You start getting thankful like that, and things will start to move. I promise you. So take some time and read through Leviticus. Read every chapter. And there's a sin after sin after sin. But regardless, the blood covered it. The blood covered it. And finally, the blood of Jesus' own son covered it forever. It is a phenomenal story, fascinating story. Let's get it any one time. So take time, read through Leviticus. Get yourself a blessing. God bless, guys. Thanks for listening today. Be sure to join us Monday, Wednesday, and Friday to hear more of what God can do in your life. It's got a great future for you and your family, and we're here to help you get there. Please make sure you visit Joe McGee Ministries on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. There you find all of our Friday funny videos and other encouraging resources for you and your family. While you're at it, be sure to visit JoeMcGee.com. We have all sorts of materials, books, DVDs, you name it, all there to help you, your marriage, and your family succeed.